Well, let's put it this way. We need something. Uh, the global economic momentum is slowing very sharply. We got really bad numbers out of Germany last week. China hasn't showed any sign of turnaround. U.S. now cast from Atlanta Fed is flashing 0% growth for first quarter. So a trade deal would be a real shot in the arm for a global economy that really needs some good piece of news right now. It's interesting, Timer, because it's happening at a time when the U.S. inversion is happening. So there's a lot of pressure for the U.S., especially the administration, to really show something to kind of boost growth. How, do you think they're going to have to give a little bit in terms of the trade talks in order to get something done on the table to help the U.S. economy? Christina, I think that from the White House's perspective, what the stock market does is very important. I think they have consistently showed that their desire to see the stock market do well. The stock market has turned around since December. Thanks to the relent of the Fed, the W signal has helped the stock markets worldwide. But as you can see in the last few days' momentum, that recovery is built on expectations of forward-looking developments, the trade issue working out, mm -hmm. the uh, expectation that the December-January poor data is a function of government shutdown, or the China poor data will be yesterday's story because the stimulus is in place. So, but everything is very forward-looking. We don't have anything to show for as far as recent economic data is concerned. Mm -hmm. So I think for the market to remain supported, we need some good news. And, of course, this trade one is an important one, which, of course, I think puts from the U.S. from a negotiating perspective in a bit of a tight spot. They can't afford to walk away. They know it'll be terrible for the markets if the trade deal now falls through. Mm, a quick follow -up. Your call, U.S. inversion, does it somehow signal a recession? Because there's a lot of articles out there that says we shouldn't be misreading the data just yet, and it's just too quick to call. Right. First and foremost, long-duration assets have exceptionally strong demand in this aging, debt-laden world. So we should expect fairly low re returns on capital and therefore low interest rates on, say, 10-year or 30-year bonds. So that's a secular trend. We should expect that, that you know, long-term bull market will not be upstaged by some sort of a pickup in inflation or economic growth. But from a short-term perspective, let's not overread it. Yes, inversion signals recession, mm -hmm. but sometimes with a six-month lag, sometimes with an 18-month lag. Where are we right now? And the chance that the market begins to absorb a signal from the Fed that it is going to be fairly casual about inflation down the road could actually boost long-term inflation expectations, and that might lead to a bit of a bull steepening. Mm -hmm. So this two stands inversion that we saw on Friday around poor economic data could easily turn around in my view. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.